They say a family that prays together stays together. Well, in this episode of The Bookshelf on ENCA, we speak to a family that not only prays together, but they also write together. They published a book called uh, Number 43 COVID-19 Journey, which basically documents what they went through when South Africa went under hard lockdown in March 2020. We do have with us the one of the youngest uh, family members of the Masilela family and the youngest contributor in this book, Uviwa Masilela and her father, Uputzweli Masilela. Thank you very much, guys, for your time. I'm going to ask, uh, start with you, Uputzweli, about the title. This number 43 is very important in the family. Can you explain to us why? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Masiho, and thank you for hosting us. Number 43, Tuloni Park, is a house in Eswatini, from this Swaziland. It is my grandparents' house. Um, they moved there around 1965 to provide opportunities for their children. They had about nine children. And as you are aware, it was under apartheid at the time. South Africa was under apartheid at the time. So they moved to Swaziland to create better opportunities, educational opportunities for them. Um, so they, they, they stayed there. It still is. It's still a, a, a home that um, my parents live in. The remaining uh, grandparents living there. And uh, so what happened is we recorded the history of number 43 around 2007 um, in a book form. Um, and then what, um, what thereafter happened is that uh, we, the house became a very important during that time, a very important stop point and household and home for those that were moving from South Africa to the rest of the continent, um, uh, liberating, liberating, liberation fighters, such as members of the African National Congress, members of the PAC. We had leaders of the current South African Democratic government stopping by the, your, your chief uh, former general of the South African National Defense Force, Jabu Shoke, uh, the former president of the country. In fact, he was there when we launched the book in, in 2009. He was the keynote speaker and many others. Mm -hmm. um, so this number 43 COVID-19 journey starts from there mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a family recording our history, even in the last uh, 2020 when we were under lockdown. Mm -hmm. Uvu, I'm going to come to you. So you are the youngest contributor, and I'm coming to you because it's, it's, it is, um, you know, that week when your family would ordinarily be celebrating this event, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, you'd ordinarily be celebrating the history that uh, your family contributed to uh, back then. So before I ask you about uh, something that I saw in here from you as a contributor, and I wonder if you remember what you said. Yeah. Um, how do you feel when you hear your father, your uncle, your aunts telling you all these stories about how extraordinary your grandparents were? Great I mean, grandparents in your instance, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I'm always so proud and inspired by them to know that this is my history and I've always been someone who loved to know where I'm from, who am I exactly as a person, what does, what's the meaning behind my surname. So to see this from my great-grandparents and we still have Mkul Masilela and he's turning 97 soon and to see all of them and when he tells us these stories I'm always inspired and I've always looked up to both my parents and my everyone in my family and I'm like okay <laughs> I'm proud to be who I am mm. they really do inspire me so do you remember what you wrote here? I mean, from a 14-year-old at the time, I mean, I yes. know they always say children actually know more than what yeah. adults think, but you said social justice has no age. As a 14-year-old, I love the law. Books take me through unimagined adventures and music feeds my soul. As I grow, I'd like to set a good example for my sister and younger family members. Do you remember writing that? Yes, I do. What yeah, do I remember it was 9 o'clock. I was tired. <laughs> And then my dad said, no, you still have to write this. And I just spoke from the heart. Mm. So when I meant all about the law, I think that comes from my mother's side since she was a lawyer. So I guess I just have this thing in me that loves law. And to, I mean, I think COVID was very scary at the time. It was the first pandemic I've ever gone through. Mm. So it's something scary, it's something so unexpected. We'd see it on TV, 
watch all the news and to also see that the gender-based violence cases were rising. That was also something that spoke very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. As a female in South Africa, I feel like I can relate in a way, even though I've never been put in that situation. But at this time, I felt like it was my turn to speak for those who have died, for those who have been, whatever the case may be. I felt like that was my turn to speak for them. Mm. That was my turn to say, you know what, this is going to stop. And I, I know so many people say, I'm a 2000, all they do is sit down and go on their phones and, and everything and dance. <laughs> and dance. But I think there's so much more to that. That's not always the case. We, I believe the future is in our hands. Mm. And that's why I felt it was my need to speak. Mm. So in the book, you, t uh, you talk a lot about how every Thursday at a certain time, the family would somehow meet. I mean, we were not allowed to uh, be together back in March 2020. I think for about five, six months, we were not allowed to be in each other's presence, and it had to only be a certain number of people mm -hmm. in a house. But you found a way as a family that is split between two countries mm -hmm. uh, to be able to talk to each other every Thursday. Um, I think I read somewhere in the book, uh, some, some of those meetings took up to two and a half hours. Mm. Yes, uh, in, fact, it, in fact, it was Sundays as well. Mm. Um, so we'd also have uh, our, our preacher, Mfundis um, Shabalala, mm. some sessions where we would, have, we would have sermons from him. The sessions uh, would take hours. Minimum would be the two and a half hours. Um, and representation, we would have people all over. We, mm. we, families are spread, is spread around South Africa, some in Swaziland, others even in the U.S. Um, so we also have guests, people from China, people from Europe and so on coming. Uh, there is what we call Vugas Kulum. I'm sure you saw mm, that saw in the it. book where we would uh, pick a, a, a topic for the day. Uh, it wasn't random. It had to relate to, to the environment, mm -hmm. such as uh, Oviwe is, is talking about gender-based violence, social issues, um, economic issues. Mm -hmm. The fact that we, we, we were able to meet online, for example, um, the connection, the connectivity brought by digital technologies is a privilege. Is a privilege. Mm -hmm. um, but those are things that we talked about, you know, that, that others were unable to do that. How do we, as a family, uh, see this privilege? How do we contribute to discussions about that? So, yeah, we, we met and the, the, the discussions would be heated the discussions would, you know, go on for hours and hours. Especially because we had our own opinions on some things. <laughs> so you might disagree with someone, but yeah. Well, as a family, you sorted it out together. Yeah, obviously, the book. So yes. You have a book that actually documents it. Mm -hmm. But you also, you, you mentioned Umfundis Shabalala from the Lutheran Church in Manzini. From the Lutheran Church yes, in Yes, you mentioned Zealand. there's yeah. even a part in the book where you actually have the first sermon. I think it was the 5th of April. Um, it was Holy Week, yes. and he had his first sermon when uh, the family invited your first guest mm -hmm. um, to be able to tap into the whole virtual meeting thing, mm -hmm. and uh, he had his first sermon. How was that? The fact that we had Holy Com virtual Holy, Com Holy Communion is important. This is important in, in the Christian faith. It brings us together. It cleanses us, as we say. And, and that time was very difficult. Um, uh, we were a couple of weeks, uh, even months, I think, about two or three months, to what we thought was a 21-day mm -hmm. uh, closure. So we needed that spiritual upliftment as, as a family. And then there was the breathing exercises yes. that started from 20 seconds to 30 seconds, then of course to the big number 43. Yes. What was the purpose? You explained it in the book, but what was the purpose of that breathing exercise? I think it was, so basically we would hold our breath for, as you said, those 43 seconds. And then if you cough or have trouble breathing after, then you must check the doctor, something <laughs> like that. But I could never hold my breath in for those 43 seconds. It was hard. But it was fun at the time, and it really was just to unite as a family. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the idea is that, well, we thought that uh, 
whole the lungs is where mm. COVID attacks the most. And and if you are able to hold your lungs for a, uh, your breath for a certain period of time, then you are pretty much fine. Uh, there is there is uh, you you must have seen as well at that time they were circulating. Um, social media exercises okay. about this, so that was part of it. Um, we thought it's significant that at some point we get to 43, mm -hmm. the magical number, um, and uh, if you could hold it minimum 20 seconds, you are f 20 seconds, you are fine. Uh, 43 seconds, you are pretty much good. Anything less uh, would be indicator that uh, probably you need you need help. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 a way as a family we tried i think that's important a way as a family we tried to keep keep each other uh, mm -hmm. in spirit uh, it was a depressing time for the country mm -hmm. uh, you'll see in some of the pictures where the, the, there are images of the city totally deserted yes. roads deserted uh, and it, it's it was a very difficult time so we had to find something that as a family kept us together and the recording of it i think uh, reflects what might have been happening in other families across, mm. you know, trying to maintain contact, um, pray together as you as you introduced mm. it, uh, you know, keep each other, um, not lose hope, you yeah. know, in mm. a difficult time. Mm. Mm. And also, I just wanted to go back to the privileged part of it, where Uvi were also, you were discussing it together, that you realized as a family how privileged you were to be able to get access to the internet, to connect to each other um, from here to as far as Swaziland. But I want to talk about Umkulu. 97, 97. at some point you were very worried in the book. Uh, you, there's a part in the book where you mentioned that you were very concerned about his health, not only because he's so far away from you, but because number 43, as you said, was a home of refuge for a lot of people. It still is. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in the book it says uh, social distancing was a bit of a non-existent thing for, for number 43. How is he now? He's, he's much, much better. Um, he's strong. Um, uh, you know, for his age, he's turning 97, 97. this year. Uh, for his age, he's much, much strong. Mm -hmm. um, and, and although he's blind, he is still so sharp. He can hear, you know, you say, I'm cool, he knows exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. And and if you look at, 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 at some of the things, the history that he spoke, he spoke to in the book, he survived the Second World War. Mm. He, he survived, uh, and to him, this, this, this social... This is minor this things. Is minor <laughs> things. <laughs> to him, it was something, I man, you guys are, you know, we, we, you, you don't need... You know, the this, fear. yes, we will we'll, we'll survive. We'll, mm. um, but again, in Swaziland, he stays with some of um, um, his great, great, great children. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there is difficulty in social distancing, true, but um, he has a care. Uh, sufficient care. Mm. Um, he is he's strong. Mm. He's strong. We would look forward to his hundredth. Mm. It was it was quite something when I read that extract that you sp that you uh, both spoke about. Where Mkulu mentions that he's been through more than what we were going through. Although we were stressed, we were talking about cabin fever because we needed to stay home for a while. But there were some similarities, weren't there? For instance, that uh, piece of paper that you had to carry to be allowed to be outside or allowed to actually be outside at a certain time after permits. COVID. Mm. Those permits reminded some people, I mean, I wasn't there at the time, but it reminded some people of your Dompas. Exactly. Um, that's the, 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 um, the theme for, for the year, uh, 2020, we had culture and freedom. Mm. Uh, the whole idea of, of freedom was that they fought for our freedom. We were free to move. Uh, from 1994, anywhere and everywhere we wanted. He, had, he was in the Second World War, as I said. He was in the front line in Egypt with the allies, you know. Um, and so for him, uh, this was something, you know, uh, anemic. You know, it's, it's now to be suddenly told to stay put. You can't leave your house. It did bring in those those memories and and the interaction with him. In fact, ironically, this this 
him telling us that this is, you know, we've, we've seen worse. Mm -hmm. I've been to war. Um, I've, I contributed to this freedom, this free ability to go anywhere and everywhere. Uh, encouraged us in a way, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Although uh, he is, I want you to to be comfortable in the fact that he is sharp. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fighter. He's, he's a fighter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. So um, this week, you were supposed to yet again celebrate Makokoism, Mkuluism. I think last year was more about Mkulu. Um, and now you've had to cancel again. Yeah. And this is uh, this is a repetition of, for instance, last year you were meant to actually launch a, a memory um, cycle. A bike, bike run. Yeah, yes, because yes. a family member of yours actually passed away in Swaziland, a country that is very close to the family as well, yeah. um, from the motorbike accident. Yes. And you were supposed to launch this thing in memory of him and others who've fallen. Now you have to cancel again. Yeah, I mean, it's very disappointing, but we understand why it's the consequences of COVID. But at least our family is still together. And we haven't lost many people in our family due to COVID, and uh, we're so thankful for that. And the fact that we still get to call them once in a while, it's a privilege, as we said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer to say we've rolled over again. For, for the second time, not cancelled, mm. because the theme, the theme is important uh, of culture and, and freedom. Uh, last year, in, in 2020, we, it was the 43rd year um, of the death of uh, Steve Bantubiko, mm. and he was one of the people that we wanted to bestow the, our, our, our respect through the Makokoism trophy that we give them. Uh, uh, and then this year was supposed to be Robert Sebukwe, uh, mm -hmm. who is also 43 years after his, his passing. Um, and we wanted to do the same. Uh, in terms of culture, we wanted to pay respect uh, to Koko um, in Mpumalanga, um, Esther, Esther Matlangu as well. So... Those are important themes because these are the people that represent what, what, what number 43 fought for, the freedoms, the cultures that we enjoyed. Uh, we can't cancel because uh, whether um, COVID continues, we still need to pay respect mm. to these people. So if, uh, at the next best opportunity, hopefully uh, um, next year, about around the same time, we, we will be able to to bestow this respect mm. uh, to those to those fallen heroes and and custodians of our culture. Mm. In the book, you also mention the death of Me Ethel Butelezi mm. or Masilela, um, and in the book, I'm not sure who was the contributor there, mm. um, but I think it was uh, Dr. Elias Masilela who also mentions, I think the. The fact that there was, it was no longer about social distancing, it was also about distancing even during grief mm. because you couldn't be together to lay her to rest and comfort each other. Mm. We are humans. When we grieve, we want to be together. We physical want to, to physical touch, to hold your hand, to cry together. And this is the nasty part of, of, of COVID, mm. that even at your lowest point, you are unable to share the grief to to comfort each other. We we have uh, Mema Silela dying, and we had to watch the funeral uh, mm -hmm. and in, in virtually. And we also have many others that are friends and close to 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 the family uh, who died. Fred, um, um, Friends in Zimbabwe, for example, friends everywhere, you know, uh, that you, you, you were left to watching it on, on, social, on social media, in, in YouTube and so on, and no touch, no sense of, of, of comfort mm -hmm. that you would enjoy in, in such circumstances. But it's still a privilege to be able um, to, to view it um, it may it may not be as as comforting as touch, mm. but the fact that some you, you know you you can see the the funeral, you can actually get a sense of what, of of what is happening mm. and a bit of closure from 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 that. Yeah. Um, I just want to go back to asking about the book. Was there any particular reason, for instance, that you decided 
because I realize it's glossy, mm -hmm. but it's also a newspaper, the newspaper kind of format. Thing. Was there any reason for that? It was deliberate. Mm -hmm. um, it was deliberate. It is in the newspaper format to reflect that it's accurate. It's it's to dispel fake news. At the mm -hmm. time, there mm -hmm. were you know fake no news. A newspaper we trust. There's there's a sense of trust that it's real news. It it represents true events, and so the format of of of, of a newspaper that we took was to reflect that, to show that um, all the events that are reflected there, the writing mm -hmm. that she she talks about, and the different experiences that we we go through are not are not fake. They are real. Mm -hmm. The pain that is reflected is real. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it was a deliberate uh, layout for, for, for the book. Uvu, I'm going to come to you. So, you know, when we spoke about privilege earlier, yes. there are people who won't even understand, um, you know, that even having a mask back then was a privilege. Yeah. And your family took it upon, you took it upon yourselves to yeah. actually distribute the number 43 mask. And while you answer that question about the importance of that and realizing that this privilege, I'll also show the viewers um, exactly what I mean by the fact that there was a drive for the mask. So basically, um, I think it was Mkulu um, Elias who came up with the idea to make these masks and caps and to go around distributing it to everyone else. Anyone, actually. I remember this one time we were going to my aunt's house and we saw someone by the street wearing the mask. And I mean, mm. it's, it was so nice to see that people are actually wearing these they're supporting us and we're supporting them back. Mm -hmm. This was one of the actions that if Koko um, Masilela was still here, she would want this to happen. She would want us to do this. So I guess this was us carrying her actions and still making it present. When you were told that you had to be a contributor or when you decided that you wanted to be a contributor, how did it feel? And are you hoping to carry on writing? So uh, how it happened was we had these calls uh, every weekend and the topic for that specific day was gender-based violence. And as I said, this was something I was very passionate about because I am a female in South Africa. So I spoke about this and then um, Kulu Masilela said, you know what, I'd love if you were to write in this book. And I was so excited but because it's such a sensitive topic if you could say one thing wrong you could offend so many people mm -hmm. so i think that was the pressure that i had on my shoulders like okay i have to get this right don't say anything wrong don't say anything that might offend someone and yeah i definitely would love to carry on writing because it is something i love all right uvuya masilela and uputzoli masilela thank you very much for your time i think for me this book is a soothing book, and it shows you that we all went through it together. So, uh, number 43, COVID-19 journey, congratulations on this book. Thank, Thank you, you Masiho. And it is, uh, people can still go to number 43, Trelawney Park, the website, www number 43 Trelawney Park, Um There is a link to the book. You can also get a copy of it. It's quite reasonable. It makes a very good gift, actually, for people. Mm. It's only 350 rands. Mm. You can order it as well online. Thank you very much thank for the you. opportunity. My pleasure, and thank you guys for this interview. All right, that was it for the episode of Bookshelf this Sunday. See you next week.